This is really cool. This is the Super Power Dome 2 with twin vortex chambers, aluminum cylinder head for wide block Hudson flathead engines. And this was made by um, Dan White um, from Twin H Squared Performance or TH2 Performance. Uh, he's a great HET club member who started this effort uh, based on some older designs to make what is really the first newly engineered and manufactured Hudson engine speed part uh, for decades. So, and this is what it looks like. This is what it looks like. It's super cool. Um, it's got all kinds of neat tricks, and I'll talk a little bit about the design and, and how he put it together, but you can see it's got like the, the neat sort of embossed name and this little like Hornet logo here and stuff like that. Um, this isn't just for Hornet engines, right? For 308s, this will fit 262s and the wide 232s. So pretty much any Hudson flathead six um, from 1951 to 1956, except for the jet, right? The jet got the narrower, smaller block. Um, but this is really cool. So how did we get here and why? Um, Making L-heads, right, flatheads, L-heads, uh, side valve engines breathe is difficult, especially at high RPM. Um, you're talking about a almost a 180 degree, degree turn for airflow uh, in your chamber. So you've got air coming up out of a valve, jumping over a wall, and then down into, you know, through the chamber, down into the cylinder and then you know compression bang and then when air has to get pushed back out again uh, it has to make that turn again all the way around over that wall and then out the valve so getting air to do that quickly is is tricky um the stock cylinder heads had sort of a heart-shaped chamber um there were some efforts previously to make more performant chambers than that original design. Um, some aftermarket heads were sort of squared off, which probably actually made worse performance. Uh, but there were some designs that made more power that let you get better flow and mixing um, in your flathead chamber. One of those was Harry Ricardo's design. He had sort of a comet swirl chamber, um, which sort of tapered off and it demonstrated really that turbulence in the chamber improved your flame speed uh, And your mixing and therefore your flow under higher compression So it let you move more air cram more air in there um, As you know an engine is basically just a big air pump the more air you can get in there and out and the quicker you can do that uh, The more fuel you can dump in the more compression you can make and the more power you get out of it uh, There were some early concept designs for aluminum cylinder heads for Hudson's um, as early as I think 1945. Uh, they didn't work too too well but you could for the Hornets you know and the the wide block late model engines you could get uh, a factory option an aluminum cylinder head I think they called it the Super Power Dome which is kind of why we've got the Super Power Dome 2 here. Um, that was an H145 upgrade that you could get. I don't think they made a whole lot more power, but they were kind of a race part that you could get. Actually, I have my old stock Super Power Dome 1, I guess now it is, but Super Power Dome H145. This is a 3 or 8 aluminum factory head. And you can see what the stock chambers kind of sort of looked like. So you can see your spark plug hole is moved way over, over top of the exhaust valve. You've got this sort of very gradual rising and then this sort of heart-shaped chamber here where it sort of turns into this, this semicircle and has this very gradual rise. Um, so that's what the stock looks like compared to like the crow's foot design or the twin vortex design. And you can see what happens over time, how these things can just kind of get eaten up, especially if they're abused. This one has a crack in it, so it's wall art uh, at this point. Maybe I'll polish it up and put it on the wall because it looks kind of cool, but 
this is what you were looking at originally. Of course, you got the factory thermostat housing over here. Everything else, you know, very original, very flat. Um, I do like the fins on the twin vortex, not just for cooling, but also for a little bit of extra rigidity. You know, with the iron heads, you've got those big ribs going across um, all the head bolt holes, and I think that that kind of strengthens it a little bit, but this is what one of the originals looks like. Um, kind of just a cool looking paperweight compared to, to what Dan's put together here, but at least you can kind of get an idea of what that looks like. Uh, there were other aftermarket providers of aluminum heads for Hudson's. You've got Edmunds, they made a head, which is, you know, kind of got the cool fin thing going on. It reminds people of like the flathead Ford V8s. Um, that uses a Ricardo style chamber. Uh, there's also uh, a Clifford head, right? Clifford is, of course, famous for making 6 equals 8, all of the straight 6 speed parts. Uh, and they have a chamber similar to the Edmunds as well. Uh, and I think somebody still remakes those. You might be able to get them. But... So then we fast forward a few decades, and we get to the first twin vortex designs. So we've got two guys, Chuck Fellows and Rudy Bennett. They used computer-aided design, computer simulations and modeling. They tested a bunch of various L-head chamber designs, flathead chamber designs, and they figured out how to simulate the best flow and the mixing, and they determined that the twin vortex, as they called it, or the crow's foot, as you might have heard it called, design, uh, was the, the best performance. Um, the crow's foot design, I think, originated with Ed Winfield, he was a super cool hot rodder back in the early 20th century, doing all kinds of stuff with flatheads. Um, their projects kind of sort of ran out of steam, uh, Chuck and Rudy. Um, they ran into some production issues and things like that, but the design kind of lived on and was adapted by Dan to wind up with what you see here. Uh, and we'll go ahead and take a look at what we mean when we say crow's foot or twin vortex. Here you go. With a stock-shaped cylinder, you'd probably have sort of like a heart shape. This would just sort of round off. It would taper very gradually and just kind of round off. Uh, some of the aftermarket heads by like Edmonds or Clifford, uh, it would sort of be just a perfectly straight line, uh, and it would taper very quickly. That was sort of that like Ricardo design chamber. Uh, but here you have these sort of two swirls. Um, and the idea is, I guess, you know, air is shooting in. Uh, it kind of drives it, swirls it, it creates some turbulence inside the chamber to make sure that you get a good mix, um, that everything flows quickly, uh, and the same thing when it gets ejected out the exhaust. So that's really the meat and potatoes of this design. That's how you're going to make just that much more power um, under a higher compression. So, numbers. Uh, I believe stock compression was 6.5 to 1. Uh, with the model that you see here, this flavor of the Super Power Dome 2, you're getting 8.5 to 1 in comp compression. Excuse me, 8.5 to 1 compression. Um, there's a couple of other options that you can get. You can get these instead of just cast and then finished chambers. You can get like CNC finished chambers, which are that much more precise. Um, I didn't get that. I don't, I don't, I didn't really see a reason I'm not going berserk with, with power here. Uh, the other option is you can get an extra thick head. Uh, this is 2 inches exactly. All the stock heads were ostensibly two inches. This is two inches exactly. You could get thicker metal here if you wanted to lower your compression ratio uh, if you're going forced induction. If somebody's going to supercharge one of these uh, or turbocharge one of these, I'd love to see what that looks like because that's going to be great. Other changes from the stock design, you can see uh, the spark plug is moved. So instead of being over the exhaust valve like it was originally or like you get um, in like a Ricardo design chamber, it moves it a lot closer to being over top of the piston. Um, so that helps too. Uh, Ricardo designs don't let you do that because they kind of taper off and your spark plug would be hitting the uh, top of the piston. But uh, You can run 89 pump gas with this, which is really cool. I'm already running 93 anyway because I got a little timing and a little cam and a little lots of other things. Um, but yeah, 89, that's great. That's easy to get. Uh, no big deal. You don't need race gas or anything ridiculous like that. Other cool things that you get with this, obviously, these really nice fins. Uh, being an aluminum head, I think it already cools better than an iron head by leagues. 
Um, but these fins are just going to help with that that much more, um, which is really, really nice. You know, uh, there is a water jacket traveling through um, this head, uh, you know, and the stock heads. There's a water jacket moving through them um, and then up to the thermostat, right? So it's nice to have just a little bit of extra cooling capacity that way. Um, the nice thing about these thermostat housings is unlike the stock ones, they've modified this. So this takes a standard small block Chevy 350 style um, thermostat and thermostat housing. So you can pick one up in any auto parts store. You don't have to carry around an obtainium thermostat um, that you might not be able to get everywhere, which is kind of cool. They're not that hard to get. I carry a spare anyway, but it's nice to know that you could pick one up anywhere if you really needed to. Other cool things about this as far as block compatibility and, you know, carburation compatibility, um, it comes pre-relieved for twin H linkages, which is great because I run twin H. I think most people who are going to install one of these would also like to run twin H. So you can see it's kind of flattened out everywhere where you're going to have the linkages and the air cleaner supports and stuff like that. So you can run a stock twin H setup, which is nice because I plan on doing that. Uh, we also have half inch head bolt holes. Um, these are all pre-drilled for half-inch head bolt holes. If you have 7 16 inch studs or bolts, like stock, um, I think 1951 to 54, they were all 7 16 and I think 55 and 56, they were a half-inch by default from the factory. But you can get bushings uh, if you want to drop it down to the smaller studs. So this is compatible with 7 16 inch studs. You just have to get bushings. Um, and he, Dan provides links and, and places where you can buy all the hardened studs, um, chamfered washers, bushings, whatever you need, uh, he can get you set up, which is really cool. But I'm just going to use my half-inch bolts, because that's what I have. Um, and then all of the threads, of course, for uh, heater core, um, temp senders, stuff like that. Everything is already ready to go, and in mostly stock locations, and all of the threads are written down in the documentation so that you can order parts, which is kind of cool. One thing that I'll mention about the thermostat housing and the fins is if you have aftermarket accessories, like if you have air conditioning or power steering or something where you have a bracket hanging off the side like a lot of folks do, um, like I have, I have a modern alternator and an air conditioning compressor, um, you're probably going to have to muck around with this. You're probably going to have to change your bracket or widen it or rearrange it to go around the thermostat neck. And then you're probably going to have to do some shaving here in order to get your bracket to actually bolt on the way that you want it to so that it's flush with the tops of the hood bolt holes here. So that is one modification that I'm going to have to make if I want to run all of the same accessories and I'll have to figure out how to do that and what that's going to look like. But that's something to think about if you're looking at one of these. Um, some notes on installation that I have, you know, there's a lot of back and forth on what kinds of gaskets you should use with aluminum heads. Um, I know a lot of people swear by the Felpro metal head gaskets. Uh, some people swear by uh, the Graftite best gasket style gaskets. I really like the best gaskets personally. I've been using them on my, on my iron heads. Um, I know like Moss family, they use the best gaskets uh, on all of their stuff, um, including their aluminum heads. Never had a problem with it. Uh, that's probably the way that I'll go. Some people have had issues where they blow head gaskets, uh, the fire rings, on the graphite gaskets and they say yes never use them always use the metal fell pro ones um i don't know there's back and forth on that maybe it depends on how far you go hopping this thing up but uh, i i'll probably keep using the the graphite ones i just like them better um they're readily available they're easy to get from a couple of different manufacturers um and and stores so and then one final thing, of course, when you're moving to an aluminum head, if you have an iron head at the moment, is corrosion. That's another place where a lot of people shy away from these. Anytime you have dissimilar metals, aluminum on iron, um, and you have coolant running between them, coolant, of course, over time can turn acidic, um, and that can actually start to sort of eat away and dissolve um, the aluminum. Uh, and that's not good. You don't want to trash this thing. So... Uh, you want to make sure that you're keeping an eye on it. You can get pH, like litmus tests, to make sure that your coolant isn't turning acidic over time. The best thing you can do for it is apparently just drive it, run it, cycle it. Um, that keeps it fresh. Uh, and some people just replace their coolant once a year, and they don't have a problem with it. But it's something to keep an eye on, especially if you're going to put this on a car that sits. Um, maybe drive it more. I don't know. <laughs> That'd be the fun thing to do. That'd be the easy fix.
and then the last thing you know the difference between aluminum heads and iron heads is you usually torque iron heads warm uh after you know every of the first few heat cycles after you put on an iron head you're retorquing it to make sure that the torque like the bolts don't loosen up um but you always 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 torque aluminum heads cold uh you never ever ever torque them hot you can warp them you can break them you don't want to do that so you're going to torque it down fire it up uh get it nice and hot and warmed up um, maybe you're going to do whatever first start adjustments you want to do and then you're going to let the thing totally cool off so that it's room temperature again and then you're going to torque it down again one other thing that's nice about an aluminum head of course is it saves a lot of weight i mean i can't remember what the iron head weighs and what the difference between like a, a chrome iron alloy versus aluminum is but this thing has to weigh less than half of the stock iron head i mean i can't take off my cylinder head by myself. I need my wife or my dad to come and help me do it because it's just ridiculous leaning over the fender of the car. But this I think I could install and, and then pick up again by myself. Um, and he made it a little bit nicer for you to do that because you can see on the side you've sort of got these tangs uh, which you can pick it up by uh, if you're going to lift it off. I might have to shave those down a little bit actually. They look pretty thick. I don't know how close that'll get to the firewall but that makes it a lot nicer to pick up and put down and install and you know, if you're in the interest of speed, I guess you're going to save a little bit of weight, which is nice. This is kind of cool too. Dan provided some nice documentation with this. Um, he includes a little bit of history about the design, basically things that I rattled off. Um, talks about the machining process, pressure leak testing, heat treating, the different finishing options with extra metal or chambers or CNC chambers. Once again, any inline six engine from Hudson from 1951 to 56, except for the jet which I think had a narrow block, 232. Uh, and there's a little more information in here as well about installation and um, some of the people who helped on the project, the parts that you're going to need. There's the thermostat, bolts, washers, studs, other fasteners, and torquing instructions. And he includes all the information you need to know about how to torque an aluminum head, what to do with thread sealant, because of course some of these head bolt holes go into the water jacket. Um, he's got some other information here about what you're looking at for compression ratios. Yep, standard head is 8.5 to 1. Extra metal gives you six point, or 7.6 to 1, excuse me. Uh, and a bunch of calculations here for when you mill it down what you're going to get, which is kind of nice. That's kind of nice. And then how to mill your fins if you have power steering or air conditioning or something like that the AMC bracket for air conditioning, so that's cool. Revisioning the uh, linkages for twin H and the coil bracket. So what are your alternatives to this? Uh, well, obviously you can keep running your stock iron head and you know exactly how much power that's going to make. I guess it kind of depends on what you want. Um, I've always used iron heads. I've been interested in the aluminum heads um, for a while. I have an old one. Um, which actually is cracked, so I can't use it, but this is going to be more performant than anything else out there, hands down. I mean, this was totally engineered for speed. Uh, there's nothing else like it right now. Uh, the other cool thing about it is it's new. Um, there's not a whole lot of brand new aluminum heads like this that look this good and that perform this well out there. I think somebody remakes like the Clifford style heads, but they're not really, I think they are mostly eye candy. I, I don't think that they do a whole lot. This is way more than eye candy, um, and that makes it really special. And again, it's newly manufactured, you know, it's kind of hit or miss going for a, a new old stock head or a totally used um, head that you just find on eBay or something like that or from somebody in the club. Um, I've bought heads that had cracks in them, heads that are already milled way too thin, you can't use them. Um, and especially with the aluminum heads because they just got abused and and totally mucked with so uh it's you know again it's the the first new piece of engineering that i know of in decades for for hudson's engines so i think that makes it really unique i don't think there's anything out there that's really like it i hope that dan makes more someday i know he had a limited first run um but i think that people are going to realize that these are great and that you know over time we're going to start to run out of old used heads and we're going to start to need more new ones so I like to think that eventually, you know, he saved the design, obviously, hopefully 
somebody can pick it up again in the future, if not him, and make some more of them. But yeah, it's pretty cool. Uh, I'm really, really thrilled to be able to have one of the, the first units here. I'm probably not going to install it immediately. I'm honestly going to put it on a shelf and hold on to it. I just got done putting uh, a fresh old iron head on my car last year, and I'm not really interested in in, in taking my driving running car uh, off the road again to, to put this on, especially since I have to, you know, do some modifications and things like that. So for now, I'm going to enjoy my car the way it is. Uh, I'm going to save this for a rainy day or if I ever want to do a little hot rotting. Um, and I'm going to use up my iron head and maybe if that starts to spring a leak like my last one did, then I'll take a look at getting this thing put on there and have some fun. But yeah, thanks to Dan, we've got a really cool, nice new Super Power Dome 2. Um, and I'm really looking forward to seeing some videos of people who got it on their car already because I think it's going to be really sweet.